Hello, my wildlings, and welcome to Okami HD. Some of you may remember a time where I didn't get interrupted. <laughs> I'm kidding, that always happens. No, but you may remember a time where I was actually playing Okami, and I was playing it actually on the original Wii version. Uh, and I, I got a little ways in and things, uh, but unfortunately I got a lot of data got corrupted, like a whole two, three hour recording session. And honestly, I was just so put out for it that I kind of just had to get away from it for a little bit. Do you mind? Could you stop interrupting me, please? It's rude. Uh, but anyway, after that, I went a long period of not playing it. But it, it's because I had never played it before then. And honestly, I was quite enjoying it. And I do want to complete this game, because obviously it's a classic and it's gorgeous. So I picked up the HD version for my Switch. So here I am, back at it again. To tell a friend? No, wait. Uh, anyway, whatever the, the lyrics are or something, I guess we'll just hop into it. Uh, obviously it won't be from where I was. I can't be bothered to go the whole way there and then start recording from there. It's the HD version anyway, so it's going to look pretty. And it's been such a long time since I recorded those episodes that I can barely remember <laughs> anything I said or did. So we'll see how it goes. Story. H Hideki K K Kamiya. I'm sorry, I, I butchered your name. I apologize. Oh, but this game is just gorgeous. Long, long ago. I don't know why this is the voice I've chosen, but we'll go with it. A tiny hamlet known as Kamiki lay nestled in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. Each and every tree around the quiet burg was honoured as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. For example, Janet over there, you see her, yes. I heard she has a crush on Barry. Yes, that Barry. I know, right? I was like, oh my god. And she was like, yeah, but you can't tell anyone. So obviously you can't tell anyone. I'm telling you because I trust you. But you're not going to tell anyone, right? Good. Oh, and also there's a giant dragon thing with lots of heads. Uh, to satiate, satiate the appetite of Orochi, a fearsome cave-dwelling beast. A young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. Let's hope it's not Barry this time. Last time, they didn't want Barry. But Barry is a lovely young maiden. But apparently, this is a very old-fashioned dragon cave-dwelling beast, so... <laughs> With a body like a mountain, and eight heads mounted on necks the size of tree trunks, its blood-red eyes alone were set to curse anyone who gazed into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. Except for Stephen. Stephen was the class clown. Stephen did not last long. I mean, the thing's got eight heads. He was torn into eight pieces, and then all eight pieces were eaten by a separate head. Although there is some tales that perhaps one of the heads ate two pieces, and one of them didn't eat any. But, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not for this all. You know, that's just superstitious. <laughs> I mean, an eight-headed dragon, and then one of the heads eats two pieces of a boy named Stephen instead of, you know, just one fairly and sharing all that. <laughs> oh, no, that's just silly superstition. Anyway, when the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, was dubbed Shiranui. The wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. Mm. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Arachi. Mm. 
but in fact, they had never met yet. They, they had taken out personal ads each and uh, were considering de meeting up to date, but they got the arrangements of where to actually meet wrong. I mean, all Rochi said was, meet me at this village place. And then uh, Shiranui turned up and was like, hey, I am here at the village place. But then uh, Rochi wasn't there. And well, let's just say it was a not quite yet, but maybe could have been a lover's tiff. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'll get to that part. One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shiranui. The warrior Nagi attempted many times to challenge the wolf, but his attempts were, attempts were thwarted by Shinuri's swift movements. And before long, the night of the accursed festival had arrived. A white plumed arrow heralded the coming sacrifice. Piercing the sky, the arrow sunk its shaft squarely into Lude, the home of Nami, the villager's most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret love for Nami, was enraged at the, by this sign. Determined to put an end to Orochi once and for all, Nagi travelled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved and was promptly torn into eight pieces and eaten, each head having one piece equally. And definitely none of them having more than one each, because that would be rude and impolite, and it's good to share. He's a cave-dwelling beast, not, not a uh, evil. Wait, maybe... The Moon Cave, a place as dark as evil itself, served as Orochi's home, and Nagi stood bravely before the entrance. A beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight thrashing necks. Orochi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade valiantly. On and on he sliced, well into the moonless night. But Orochi's hide was like steel. The blade left nary a scratch. At long last, Nagi, his energy spent from the intense battle, dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. It was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Nagi, it stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coat shone brilliantly. Alas, it was Shiranui, the wolf that dwelled outside the village. Bearing its fearsome claws, Shiranui slept towards Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly, thrashing in the darkness. Obviously, Shiranui was still pissed at uh, Arachi for not, like, meeting her. And then Arachi's like, Oh, but it, babe, I was over here. You should have come to the right place. But Shiranui was like, No, you should have been clearer. It's not fair. And then Arachi was like, Oh, right, fine, I'll just eat you then. Ah, oh, I knew it, you bastard. You... Evil, evil bastard. I bet you don't even share e each eight piece equally between all your heads. And then Arachi was like, <gasps> How dare you? Mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. And they argued like this for a long time. Shirinui summoned gusts of divine wind to counter Arachi's flames. <sighs> Ha-ha! Divine flames. As Orochi closed in on Shiranui, sharpened claws glistening, a gigantic tree suddenly sprouted forth, shielding the wolf. Shiranui fought gallantly to gain the upper hand, however. Orochi, protected by a mystical power, was not easily bested. Shiranui, covered in gashes, majestic 
coat dyed crimson. She thought it would look nice if she dressed up in red, stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi. Orochi saw a chance to strike what would be the final blow. But Shirinui refused to give in with its last ounce of strength. The majestic wolf gazed heavenward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly, the black clouds overhead dissipated. <gasps> Is the moon? The light from above glinted off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. Guided by his sword, Nagi, who had been taking shelter in the shadow, stood proudly to face his adversary, channeling all his strength into his scarred and battered arms. He leapt ferociously toward Orochi, his sword poised high. The golden sword danced in his hands like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome heads separated from their owner. Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. Shirinui had succumbed to Orochi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kamiki. When they reached the village, Shirinui was no longer moving. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shirinui let out a hoarse and pitiful bark, then closed its eyes and drifted off as if into slumber. and then woke up quite well rested the next day. Absolutely fine. Peace had at last returned to Kamiki village. In honor of Shirinui's heroic exploits, the villagers erected a shrine and placed a statue of the wolf within it. Naki's sword was christened Tsukiyumi, I think I pronounced that right, and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all looked forward to an age of endless peas. I mean peace. I'm sorry, I'm hungry. However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. One hundred years had passed since Nagi and Shirinui's heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. Oh? Oh no. Here's a big bell. And a sword. Is this the legendary sword? Is this Tsukuyumi, the sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? No, it couldn't be. It's just a legend, nothing but a fairy tale. Oh. Uh, sorry. Run away. <laughs> Are you my Tinder date? Oh, he who seeks power. <coughs> <coughs> that voice is awful. Oh, he who seeks power. He who has broken my bonds. Speak the words. I wish darkness onto the world. Utter that prayer unto me and unleash my power. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair enough. I'll just go back to sleep. Roar. Run away! 
Ah, to you too. Oh, it's all bumped the head. Oh, no, they're gone. Trees! Oh no! Ooh. Huh. Well that sucked. And that, kids, is why you should always be clear about where you're meeting. No, never mind. A horrible tragedy suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kamiki Village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. Uh-oh. Ah, rock! Are you the sacred tree? Wood Sprite Sakuya. How troublesome! Oh, this is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. Why can there never be an ancient prophecy of adorable kittens, or an ancient prophecy of lots of sweets and stuff and happy pi happiness? No, it's always f f bloody doom. Well, it's not always bloody doom, but doom in general. What has transpired to bring about such calamity? We must act quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. Now I don't have much time left in this world. Amaterasu, now is the time. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine light upon this broken and polluted world. Let your heavenly rays become our hope as you guide us all. Level up. Uh, yeah, what's up? Yes, I was having a nap. Okami Amaterasu. Ah, oh, such divine white light, such beauty and grace. The only one capable of such a wondrous spectacle is none other than our mother and the origin of all that is, Amaterasu. How delightful to see that the saviour whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago has not changed one bit. The seeing you emerge after so many years spent as a statue brings happiness to my heart. Sniff. Yeah, uh, sure thing, lady. I'm gonna have a nap. Uh, Amaterasu? Gaze above you and take in the condition of the sky. Since your untimely departure from our mists, the world has succumbed to devious and vicious beasts. They have ravaged our fine and bountiful country of Nippon. But never have the circumstances been worse. And then they are at this very moment. Please, use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm. Would you do it for a Scooby snack? Eh? What is this? Has something stolen its way into my robe? Oh, ho, ho. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh my, that angle. Thank you for that. Oh, phew! What on earth? Hey, I'm the shipman who's just been sat between your tits, lady. <laughs> ugh. Oh, no. No, that's... Ugh, no. You again? Are you nuts? You know what, let's go with that. Boy, for a little thing, you sure make a big fuss. I was just trying to make the conversation a bit more interesting, that's all. Were you napping in my clothes again, Bug? I've, her voice is gone now, apparently. But I 
Well, I told you a thousand times not to kill me that. Now I'm a wandering artist. The name's Isson. Wandering artist Isson. Now I'll show you just how great I am, and it won't be long till you're bowing before my great brush. Oh. You see that? It's. I'm going to draw a new diversion later, but you'll have to pay for that on Patreon. Well, what do you think? Even cuter than the real thing, no? Er. Oh, what's with you, Fermel? You look kind of down in the dumps. Naturally. You look kind of familiar. Oh, got it. You look just like that statue of Shirinui. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, I have done something to my voice and it's not good. Nom. <laughs> Whoa, what do you think you're doing? Are you crazy? A oh, handsome guy like me should never be coming in wolf slobber. You'll regret messing with the great Isson. Don't make me use my prized saws. Denko Moro against you. <gasps> Is that the sword, or just your stomach? Whoa, what's that growling sound? And why is it so dark anyway? Oh, great god, Amaterasu. I've used all the power I have to protect Kamiki village. The village lives on. Their spirits lie encased in my fruit. Cut it free, and the village will be reborn. I trust in you. I know that you will lead us down the right path. Only your awesome power can restore life to the world. Oh, that tree's returned to normal, huh? Oh, that Sakuya girl sure did said some weird stuff. Oh, villagers spirits are being kept inside the fruit. <laughs> oh, that's the fruit. That girl said that. If you cut it down, the village will be restored. But it's awfully high up there. If you don't use some kind of special power, there's no way you're going to reach it. Oh, this darkness is really getting to me too. A lot can happen while you're taking a nap. Well. Oh, and I'm finally in the game. Yay! <laughs> Which I suppose is as good a time as any to leave this episode here an extra long one just to get the whole story in but i will see you all in the next episode and i'll see you all then goodbye good night and good luck